Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp Weekly. In this video, I'm going to show you what exactly is a concept behind binding in SwiftUI. So one of the things that we discussed earlier on was the state or at state. The other way that you can do it or a different concept is the binding concept. So let's go ahead and see that how we can implement binding. First of all, we have a content view and you can see it simply displays a text. Now, what if I had to create a switch view, which simply contains a toggle as a separate control. And then when I switch it, it's a separate control, it's a separate view. When I switch it on or off, I need to get the value updated in the content view, meaning I need to access the value from the switch view, which we don't have right now, in the content view. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add a new file and I will create a switch view. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a Swift UI view and you can call it anything you want. I'm simply gonna call it switch view, create it. Okay, so this is our switch view. It looks kind of like this, all right? The first thing we need to do is to remove this text. We don't really need text to be displaying. We will replace it with something called a toggle. Toggle is already a view which is part of the Swift UI. Now, one of the things you will realize is that it takes a binding expression. The first argument that you're gonna pass it to the toggle is a binding. And you will be very tempted to write over here or create some sort of a state property that we learned earlier on. Let's say is on and it is a Boolean and we'll assign it to be false. And you can pass that property over here kind of like this, is on, and that's fine. But the switch view, we are not really concerned about the state of the switch view, because when you do turn on and off the toggle, we want to pass this value back to the parent. Which parent? Content view, that's the parent. So in other words, the state, we don't. Really, the switch view is not really maintaining any state of its own. When we do toggle on or off, we want to send this value back to the content view so the content view can use it. So instead of using state over here, we'll be using something called a binding. All right, and I'm gonna remove the private over here for now. And now let's see how we can do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and say toggle. Once again, is on and we need to pass in the binding Boolean, which we already have on line number 13. So I can actually pass it, is on. And now we need to set something up, like what it will actually look like, all right? Now, one of the things you will realize over here is that we can't really assign the binding to false on line number 13. So I'm gonna remove this because it's not a Boolean property, it's more of a binding property. So I'm gonna remove all of that. Let's go ahead and build that. And now we are missing a label argument, so let's go ahead and pass that. There we go, it's on, it's on, that's fine. But now we have a problem because the previews that you see over here at the bottom is calling the switch view, but now you cannot really create a switch view unless and until you call the binding or pass in the binding. And it's actually going to show you in the initializer, you have to pass in the binding. So let's go ahead and pass in the binding. You can easily pass in the binding by simply calling dot constant and passing in the Boolean value, which I'm just gonna pass it at false. Let's go ahead and check out our view. So I'm gonna go ahead and see, and this is our view. You can see it's being displayed. And you can also see that there is a toggle switch on the extreme right-hand side. I can actually fix that by simply saying fix size so that the toggle is only to the size it occupies and not the text is not really included because we have blanked out the text. Okay, so this is our switch view. This is great. It has one property called binding. This means, this property, this binding means that now we can go to our content view, start using this. So I can actually go ahead and say over here, switch view. And now I can pass in a some sort of a binding expression. Now this is where the state comes into play. The content view, I want to manage the state for the content view. 
So I can pass in the state over here. So let's go ahead and first create the state. State private var is on. It doesn't have to be the same property name, but I'm just calling it same property name. That's fine. And now I can actually go ahead and pass in. So let's go ahead and is on and is on, which is a state. So the beauty of binding is that, first of all, we are passing in the state, which is controlled by the content view. It's gonna to go to the switch view, which is right here. I'm gonna to toggle, and when I'm going to toggle, well, it's automatically going to update it, the binding property over here, to true or false, depending on if I'm turning it on or off. But something really awesome is gonna happen is that in the content view, since we're passing in the state, this state property is also going to get updated whenever you switch, whenever you turn on the bind, uh, turn on the switch or off the switch. So in other words, what's going on is that the state that you're passing over here in from the content view to the switch view, that state is going to get updated based on the on and off operation of the toggle button because we are saying that it is a binding property. So this value that you're passing is going to get updated in the content view. Most of the scenarios that you will see with the binding is that you are passing in that property like we are doing it over here. You're always passing in the binding property. So I'm passing in the state over here, which is this is on state. That goes to our binding property, which is this one. And now when I toggle, the binding property gets updated automatically, but the state also gets updated because that's what we passed in. So whenever you want to pass uh, or update the value from the child to the parent, you can use binding. Okay, so that's great. But what do we want to do when we update that value? Okay, so what we want to do is when it is turned on, we want to display like a monkey with covering his eyes. And when it is off, we want to not show that uh, emoji of a monkey. Okay, for that, I'm gonna go ahead and add a vertical stack because I need to add a text view also. There we go. All right, and now on the top of this, I can actually add a text over here. Now, if I want to add a monkey from the emoji, I can press function Control, Command, Space. Yeah, I know it's kind of long, but Function key, Control key, Command key, and then Space. So that's gonna open up and you can see I have a monkey, a regular monkey and a monkey covering the eyes. So I'm gonna click on the regular monkey for now. Now I want to display that and you can see it's actually being displayed right over here. Let's actually make it a little bit bigger so I can actually go ahead and over here and say font. And let's see that what we can uh, assign the size of the font. So we can actually say title or large title if you want to. So the monkey can get a little bit bigger. There we go. I mean, you can actually make the monkey much more bigger if you pass in the actual, I believe actual font sizes and all that stuff. Uh, I thought there was a, go ahead and find it. So it's like you have to pass in the name and all that stuff. You can do that if you want. So we're going to go ahead and say font and then we can pass in some sort of a custom size and custom font like whatever Arial and some sort of a size over here let's say 100 so the font is much bigger there we go now if i do want to change this uh, i can actually just check for the is on property so i can say over here uh, is on if it's on then we are going to display a different monkey so let's go ahead and select that again if it's on, then the monkey covering the eyes. Make sure you wrap it in string because it is a string. And else you're going to get like a normal monkey. All right. So whenever you change the switch view property inside the switch view, so if I go to the switch view and I toggle the switch view over here, this is on is getting updated, which is a binding property which gets updated. And then we go over here, the property gets updated, basically the state property. And then the body gets rendered again. All of this gets rendered again. So now let's go ahead and try it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and go and jump into the live mode and see if we can actually 
see this in action. All right, so it is loaded correctly. Now we can go ahead and check it out. You can see that when I am turning on the switch, the toggle, you can see the monkey covering the eyes. And when I turn it off, it goes back. Pretty cool, right? So that's the whole concept of binding. It's mostly used, it's, it can only be used, I guess, when you are actually passing in that value to the child controls. And then the child is gonna update that, and that update is going to get reflected in the state property of the parent, uh, basically the parent control or the parent view. So that's the whole point of binding property. And that's pretty much it, that's the binding. I, I really hope that you have enjoyed this video and now you have a concept of what exactly is binding, how it is different from the state property and how you can utilize it. If you want to learn more about building application using SwiftUI framework, then check out my Udemy course. It's called SwiftUI Declarative Interfaces for any Apple device. You can see we have 307 students enroll, highest rated course 4.8, and it's around like five hours of content right now and I keep on adding more and more content. The best way to get this course is to simply check out the description of the YouTube video that you're watching. There will be links in the video, in the description. Simply click on the link and you will get the best deal and I get to keep uh, maybe 90% of uh, whatever you pay, which is $10 basically. So you're gonna get the best deal for sure. And if you use the coupons that I have added, then I get to keep like 90% of it, all right? So I will be really grateful if you use the coupons. If you don't use the coupons, then most probably I'm gonna get only like 10% uh, of what you paid. But uh, please use the coupons that are in the YouTube description. And it, there are other courses also, if you are interested in blockchain or if you're interested in MVVM design pattern or AR kit, augmented reality or Siri shortcuts, there are a lot of courses that I have. Uh, so check out my other courses also. Maybe you'll uh, like to learn web development using Node.js. So I have a course on that also. But if you're interested in learning Swift UI, the best way to get started is to click on the link in the YouTube description and that will take you, the coupon will already be applied, purchase the course. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much.